Welcome back on Dynamo. Today I want to propose you the unboxing and review of the Battletom of the Ostrak Bull Reapers released in the 2019 by the Kensuo Shop. This is the fourth of the Battletom available for the death. So, Jivu this year has treated us really quite good because now we have the Legend of Nagash, the Night Hound, and the Flesh Eater Curse other than this for the death. Eventually you can find in the description the link to the review about all this Battleton that has been released. And we are going to see so these Osergo Reapers. For this Battleton in particular I want to try something different. So I decided to create a video for the fax released in November 2019 for this Battleton because my releasing it has been done almost at the same time as the release of the fax. So I decided to bring a separate video for the fax, so if you're interested only in them, you can find them in the description because there are. But eventually I also brought them inside this prototype itself, so each time there will be a fax referring to a certain point, I'll make start the fax as viewing with my talking about them. So, I'll bring all of these together, but if you are interested only in the facts, you can find them separately eventually, so not worry at all. So, it will be easier also when they will be updated for the facts to update that video specifically, so not worry about it. So, now we can start to see the contents inside this Patotum itself. A not to take about this cover before to start to open, it's that the cover itself is really quite identical to the special version, only that the scripts here are missing, so it's quite simply to understand and I don't find any different about them. And the Italian version also has been released with the full copy, maybe because this was a complete new army book, so there were not any other information about such new army, and so they decided to not have a light version. Eventually remember such thing, because uh, it's quite important uh, if you are going to choose the languages. Anyway, I suggest you to buy always uh, the English version, because uh, it's uh, usually more complete, even if in this case uh, it's the same. As back cover we can find this, that it's the design, that it's the one at the base of the Fist of Bones, that it's the base set box that has been released with this Patatom, and the one about the Ogre of Tribes. I'm lucky I'm not being able to find it, so I'm not be able to blink for now at least on the channel, but the imaging it's really quite amazing. So we can flip. Here we can find some anticipation about the Borriba's background and uh, the nice imaging about here, that it's really quite nice. And we can flip, we can find the contents and this, that it's an amazing image about all the mods that are inside this one. I like quite a lot this diorama because it's really quite amazing. I hoped that they would have been re released this one about uh, Shining element because I thought that it was quite amazing. Anyway, it does not be done, so okay, we hope in the future eventually. Here we can flip. Here we can find some background about the Boripas and how they developed through the years. So it's really quite amazing. I suggest you to read it quite attentively because there are quite a lot of information also about the background. Here we see the image that we have seen before, this one, but colored one, so really quite an amazing one, really quite good. And here we can find how they work and cause they work the Bon Reaper stances, so it's really quite amazing. Here we can find how they develop the culture of the Bon Reapers, so really quite uh, interesting and moreover it also gives you a sort of way to understand also how they live in the different realms, the humans and so on, because it's really related also to the other armies and so on. Here we can find how Nagash developed 
this operas and uh, in some way we can say that the Stormcast Eternals are uh, in some way the developing of such project so the Bull Reapers are older than the Stormcast Eternals so pay attention to such information because it's a really quite uh, interesting one here we can find the background about the Mortark of the Bull Reapers that it's Catacross so we can find a lot of information and it's mainly related about Malimportance and Forbidden Power so this is the developing of that background and the previous one to that so really quite amazing here we can find how the part the army of the Bull Reapers develop how it has been increased in size here we have the background about the Bull Reapers from the ancient era not the myth here but the ancient era so we can find the background of Catacus and how it evolved during all this time so there are quite a lot of information that you can keep from this because there are really quite a lot of information related to Sigmar, to Nagash, to a lot of different armies that you can be interested about. Here we can find the original realm about the Osirk Reapers. So we can find a lot of information and we can find how they developed. I suggest you to see this also to understand how Catacross worked and how it developed these things because it's really quite uh, really full of information this map so take note here we have how they work and so the structure of the society of the Borippus I want to make you notice that we have Nagash and Darkham before to find the Catacross even if Catacross is the Mortark of such Immortal Legion, Arkham the Black has uh, something also to do with this, so pay attention to such details because they are really quite interesting ones. And here we can find the different aspects for the armies that you can find for the Osirk Reapers. They are quite similar to the Grand Courts or the Flesh Eater Courts eventually, because they represent different styles to play, so pay attention to the background because they are really quite amazing ones. And uh, you can find quite a lot. For example, we have the Elite that is under Cataclos. Here we have this that uh, it's really quite interesting about the resilience of the army. Here we can find the way to play only riding ones. So a sort of uh, Elite Chavalry ones. Here we can find these that are Peace ones. The, you can think about this as degraded ones. Really quite interesting to talk, and they are referring about Gur. It's quite a specific army, but it's really quite amazing. Here we have this, that it's really a great one, and it's quite linked to Arkan. This one, because it's quite interesting in that way. Here we have the Crematorians, and as background, are one of the most amazing ones because uh, there are really a lot of information uh, to know. I think that uh, the main chart about this, uh, if it will be released, uh, will be quite low, because uh, it's really a sort of uh, particular site inside uh, this Orsiax Bone Reapers. Then we have the background about Nagash, the one about Ark and the Black, that we know all of them, but there are other information related to the Orsiax Bone Reapers. Here we have the background about the Catacross, a bit of more detailed information related to it. Here we can find this, that at the end are the Minotus in a nice background, so quite an interesting image realized in such a way. And about this, to make you understand how much I love this character, I'll give you a gift. So. Cavalos de death, gave up you for the new night of
quando fa il pieno di anime se no non sta in piedi Furia cavallo stay deaf che beve solo caffè per mantenere il suo umore più nero che c'è I hope that someone survived my gift <laughs> oh sorry but uh, reading these arch cavallos I couldn't resist to the idea to make such change such thing so okay sorry but uh, in the way write in the comment if you want to see or better to hear other types uh, of such things uh, or uh, please not because uh, it's better for your ears and uh, <laughs> okay but anyway here we have mock mortian that is uh, one of the main charities about these ossian board reapers and we have the lords or better the heroes that are related to the ossian board reapers so we have the lich cavalos the mortizans for shapers so reapers and so masons so the different rules all are here then we can flip here we can find the troops the mortal guard it's the troop related about the ossian reapers here are the elite, the Morgas, and we know them, but in the Ossic Reapers armies uh, they cover quite a lot of uh, important role. Moreover, I want to remember one thing, that these are the base for all the Morsiaks, so really quite interesting and I quite love them. Eventually, if you are interested in the Morgas, I put in the link the video about my modifying the Morgas and I'm thinking to bring also other videos eventually I'll put also those in the description or create a playlist related about Here we have the other troop about the Ossica Borribus that are the riders and they are really quite amazing are the unit that I love more even if the background is not so great I think because they don't represent quite a lot the modest themselves but the background is quite amazing and I had quite a lot of fun for my gift cost them, so take note. Here we have the elites specifically related to the Oscar Reapers because the Morgas are not completely related to them, but these are, and they are really quite great and amazing. Here we have the Mortec Crawlers that are really amazing as a model, both for the rules that we'll see soon and because uh, the images they are perfect as background uh, as everything here we have also these gothica harvesters uh, that are one of the best big models uh, that i've seen uh, a bit complicated uh, to build as the mortic crawlers but uh, they are really quite amazing ones i really love them here we can find an image that uh, makes you see a lot of different models we have seen these previously eventually and uh, it's a sort of expansion for the Fist of Bones uh, as a box that has been released. And here we can start to see the different uh, miniatures that are available. So we can find the different models, the main characters. Here we can find, for example, Cataclos, that uh, it's really quite a big one. The rules uh, rep are really represented by this model. It's really quite big, expensive but big and really quite amazing i think that it will be quite long to paint and modify but it's worth in my opinion if you are interested to play it then we can flip and here we can find the legis and the other heroes represented eventually i make you see what i like the most and are the riders because we can find for example this model that it's really quite amazing if you think that i realized my personal riders with my personal one beast to make something better than the usual skeleton horse uh, you can understand them eventually if you want to know how i realized this model you can find it uh, in the description the link about because uh, i think that it's really quite interesting to know then we can flip here we can find Arkan with its mount and about the mount I realized a video about how to monetize the Neferato one but it's the same. Eventually in the future I bring another video about how to continue and interchange the different models monetizing it so it's really quite interesting. Here we can find about Nagash. I'm working on monetizing also this one 
but I need a bit of time because uh, there are the videos and moreover this is quite complicated to build and choose where to monetize because it's really quite an amazing model and at the same time it's the difficult of such model to be such an amazing one. Here we can find the Necropolis Sturgis and the Mortis Pretorians and you can see that as bases they are the same so eventually try to monetize them because they are really quite easy. The most problematic part should be the head but you can adapt it eventually. Here we have also the Mortec, that are the base of the modern cells. Eventually I've seen some modified models using the normal schools for the skeletons. They're really quite amazing, because if you don't like their heads, they can be a really nice choose to do. And I think that I'll do the same choose, because I'm not quite fan of such heads. The models are amazing, but the heads are not something that I quite like. So eventually take note about it. Here we have the riders and we can see quite a lot of interesting parts. And we can understand the difference between my model and these ones. So you can understand that before this uh, there were nothing much better. But these are amazing models. So eventually I suggest you to buy this uh, I think that uh, I'll not resist quite long uh, to buy at least uh, a box about them. I only wanted to see if uh, there will be a collector about uh, maybe saving some money, but uh, they're really quite crazy, beautiful. I really love them and I think that uh, I'll buy them. Here we can find the Morgas and here the Cotizar Harvest. Sincerely, this one is really quite an amazing model. I really love such model. I thought that at the beginning that it was a sort of uh, bone golem and it's not so far from the reality. So it's really quite uh, an amazing one and uh, I suggest you, if you are able, to buy one of these because it's amazing for your collection of uh, Orsax Bone Reapers, in my opinion. Here we have the Mortal Cruel and in some way it's the evolution of the school catapult of the Camrys but uh, it's really quite an amazing one. Sincerely, as model it's big, really thick and really amazing. For the Ostrich Moripers uh, I don't find, uh, okay, some heads but generally they're really quite amazing ones. The only thing that I can criticize about these models are these legs for moving it, that uh, can be quite, uh, but in a way, if you are able, you can change them, so the structure and how it works, uh, I think that it's really quite amazing, I really like uh, such option, really quite awesome one. Here we have a showing of the different units that are for the Ossiak Moribas, and here how to paint in different ways the Ossiak, so the different steps, and uh, how you can paint them. There are some options eventually and I think uh, that uh, this uh, is a quite useful guide eventually because they are quite simple to paint technically but the details uh, are really quite uh, intriguing about so we can find quite a lot or even realize different variants so it's really quite interesting one. I like also for example this top tip to make understand how to realize uh, particular effects on your basis. So really quite uh, interesting one. And now we can start to see the rules uh, about uh, such Ossiarchs or Reapers. Here we can find the usual description about uh, how it works for the Ossiarch or Reapers legends, uh, the different separation. But for here we have a fuck and uh, I'll make you see now. And it's related about the main keyword about tender spells because in the original version it's Mortisans Wizards instead has been changed with Ossiarch Bon Reaper Wizards as keywords. So it changed because it amplifies the way that you can cast the spells with moreover the endless spells, otherwise you'd have some problems to use them. And here we have the battle traits. The first one is Lord of the Ossark Empire, and it says that you can include Nagash and Arkan, even if they not have the Ossark Bon Reapers inside this army. But if you do, you can't use mercenaries. So 
you have access eventually to the mercenaries eventually so think about such option the second one it's uh, Orsek Muripas legends and are as for the legend of Nagash simply you can make gain units without any if you're going to play that legend the keyword one about it but if they have yet one of the keys keyword they can't gain another one of these so if uh, they are in such a way you can play them because you are not having any problem about simply you can't gain any bonus for those units that you are going to play simply it but uh, it's really quite um, nice as well because uh, it lets you develop uh, as you want your uh, rooster then we have Dreadless Warriors that it works perfectly exactly as uh, Deathlet Minions and so on but as an improving it's that you can take this role so a 6 plus save for any wound or mortal wound to the models if you are within 6 inch of Decatos keyword models and you have to remember that there are such models with such keywords inside the units themselves so really quite amazing one really a lot interesting you have only to be wholly within 6 inch of such model with such keyword or wholly within 12 inch of a friendly Osseg Moripas hero so really quite easy to have this one and you don't have to be really quite close or to make waste of what you want to gain from your units really quite interesting really then we have ranks unbroken by descent so this is quite a long one and the one that change must how you play the Osec Moripas the first option that this gives and that you don't take any but test for friendly Osec Moripas units so it means that you are safe you don't lose for the moral any model in such a way really quite interesting one the next step is the part about the command points you can't use the command points for the gun reapers so what does it mean it means that you are finished because you can't use everything no it means that you gain other things what are called relentless discipline points and they are really quite interesting because are many more than the command points simply you can't use the command points so you generate as usual the command points because there is a fact related about such thing that you can see here the first of the designer commentaries it's about if i can take osseg moribet's units in a grand alliance staff army and that can take the Osiak Bone Reaper units use command points for their command abilities for example the shield walls and so on and it is said yes so these rules about the Osiak Bone Reapers using their own rentless discipline points it's applied only if you're going to use the button of the Osiak Bone Reapers itself and the second of the facts about design commentary it's about if my army is an Osirk Bone Reapers army do I still receive command points as described in the rules even though I cannot use them during the battle and he say yes remember that these command points can be stolen by the opponent or they should be able to be used also for the models for example for some mercenary that you can add to your army because you can't use them for an Osirk Bone Reapers army so they should be different in this case but i think that there should be another clarement about because if you think you can't use at all the command points for the abilities that comes from the core book for example because they are not the ones that are being referred so pay attention to such detail because it's quite important so how do you generate such rentless points you generate it as usually you uh, use them for the command points simply they are only usable for the osseg reapers ways so the command abilities of the osseg reapers and uh, so you can't use for the normal core book once 
but eventually you generate really quite a lot of them because you gain one at the, the start of each battle round so it's really quite interesting that way one for each friendly Osirbo Reapers heroes on the, the battlefields one for each Warlord School Battalion that you have on your army and one for each liege that is on the battlefield remember that they add together so the liege is also a hero so those ones give you two reentrance points eventually and three if you go to play Catacos as general moreover you can roll a dice for each friendly Osric Bow Reapers on the battlefield you need once so it becomes really quite interesting and it includes also the heroes and on a six you receive another one of them so it means that eventually one legion can arrive to give you three relentless points so really quite amazing and uh, you have no problem at all about having a lot of them available as relentless points obviously more the game continue and less of those ones you have but uh, you are really free moreover you have to remember that at the end of each turn you lose all your relentless points so each battle round you see them regenerated but you lose the previous ones it's uh, something that uh, it's uh, okay because you know that uh, you gain many more than you should be able to gain but you risk to lose also the mass part of them if something changes at the end of uh, the battle round that you are playing. Then we have the specific command abilities for the Osakabo Reapers and this is Unstoppable Advance. This is uh, the command ability that you can use in your movement phase and you can pick a friendly unit that has a Hecatos keyword. So remember what I said before that the models uh, with this keyword are inside often to the units themselves or is only within six inch of a friendly Mortec Hecatos or is only within 12 inch of a friendly Osec Bull Reaper Heroes so you have quite a lot of ways to apply it and add three inch to the units move characteristic in that phase and it can still run or charge if it does not run and remember that you cannot pick the same unit to benefit of this command ability more than once per phase. So it means that you can add multiple times this one, for example, to gain 6, 9, 12 inch. So only once for each unit, but you can use this on more units eventually. So having really making it faster. So really quite amazing one in such a way. And then we have the part about the designer notes that it's about returning the models because you can make models come back with some special rules inside the models that are of the Ostrak Borribas. And so they say that you have to do this within one inch of a model previously of that unit available that has to be more than three inch of an enemy unit or otherwise that the model it's yet that one within three inch of that enemy unit so you have to pay attention to such a difference because it's quite important but it's something that we have seen also in the previous one to make better understand how to make them come back eventually remember also that there is a fuck eventually that there is not for this but for others that uh, you apply this one uh, each step so you can apply the first time when you apply a second time uh, you gain uh, that from the ones that you yet summoned so eventually use that uh, paying attention then we had the command traits uh, that uh, we have them for the cavalos command traits and the mortis and ones uh, so you have to pay attention to this uh, the commander traits are really quite interesting ones. We have, for example, the first uh, that lets you add an additional relevant discipline point uh, at the start of the battle round uh, if this genre is on the battlefield. So if you are going to need a lot of uh, the relevant discipline points, uh, you know that this is your choice. What, which one I like more is uh, the Immortal Ruler that lets you have the Dresser Warriors uh, having a 5 plus 
to save uh, instead of only a 6, so I think that it's quite better. Then we have this, that it's dark acolyte, that make you have this mod become a wizard, so the keyword, and also the ability to use one spell from the lore of the Mortensen and attempt to make that spell in your hero phase and unbind a spell, so really quite interesting in such a way. So this is, if you don't want to play too much for the ones about the mage, the wizard, you can use this and it's really quite useful. Then we have the Peerless Warriors that make that if the a modified wound roll for an attack with a melee weapon by this genre it's 6, remember that it applies only to the model, not the mount. That attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. So if you are able to make the mod gain quite a lot of attacks, it can be really quite interesting. Then we have this, that it's Hatred of the Living, that lets you add one to hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by this genre, and their mounts. So remember that in this case, it applies also to the mount itself. So really quite an interesting one about. And the target has not to be a death keyword one if uh, you are going to battle. So if you are able to change the command rate based on what you are going to use, uh, obviously if you are going to use against a death, uh, it's not so great. But uh, if you are not uh, being able to hit better, it's uh, not bad at all, I think. Then the last one is Life Stealer, and it says that at the end of the combat phase, if more enemy models were slain by wounds inflicted by this general attacks in the combat, you can heal up a D3 wounds allocated to this genre. It's a sort of uh, vampire power. It's not so good, but uh, it's not bad at all, because uh, if you are knowing that uh, you can damage the opponent, uh, you can auto-heal yourself, so not bad at all. I continue to prefer the Immortal Ruler, but uh, it's quite not bad. About the common traits for the Mortisan qualities, uh, for the Mortisans, the first and the second are the same than uh, the ones uh, as the Cavalos Commander ones, so the Ancient College and the Mortal Rules are the same. Then we have Dark Ultimatum, that lets you subtract 2 from the bravery characteristic of enemy units while they are within 12 inch of this jar. I don't think that it's really quite useful, because this model should not be so close to the enemy eventually, but they can be really quite interesting to make them have Buster Shock test, so it can be really quite interesting that way. Grave Sand Bones, that let you make the giant chrono one extra spell from the Lord of the Mortisons, that can be really quite interesting in some way that you want to save some points for the wizards, and at the same time you want to have a great amount of spells available, so it's not bad at all. Then we have Outbreaker Course, that let you roll a dice each time your opponent receives a command point while the general is on the field. And on a 6, that command point is lost. So it's really quite interesting. And uh, you have to understand that uh, it let you in some way forbid uh, the command points to the opponent. Uh, really quite strategic. It's quite casual. So I do not uh, really choose this, uh, but uh, it's something that it's quite tempting to choose. Then we have Soul Energy that make you reroll casting, dispelling, and abide the roll for this genre. If you do so, this genre suffers one mortal wound after the effect of the spell are carried out. I want to remember you anyway that you have the Deathless for the rules, so you can save such wound. And if you have the need to reroll, it can be a really quite interesting one. So eventually think about. Uh, such option because it's not so bad. Okay, you suffer mortal wounds that you can try to save, but at the same time uh, you gain quite a lot, so think about using them. And then we can start talking about the artifacts. We have a lot of artifacts because there are a lot of models that can gain them. The first one that we analyze are the relics for the Cavaloi. This is the Mind Blade that makes you know that if you pick this as the artifact, 
and an unmodified hit roll for an attack made by this weapon targets a hero only the heroes can be targeted for this weapon and you obtain a 6 your opponent loses 1 command point to a minimum of 0 and that hero can use command abilities for the rest of the battle it's quite amazing if you are able to target the heroes of the opponent and charge back and so on you can really make that the opponent even can generate the command points and not having models that can use them really quite crazy moreover it should not apply to other Osirk Mori because they don't use command points okay it's strange but this it's really a quite amazing artifact really quite amazing this let you once per battle at the start of any phase have other D3 relentless discipline points. If you combine with this, that it's that you generate at the beginning, you can gain quite a lot only for one turn. But if you in quite a need, can be quite useful. Sincerely, I'm not going to use this artifact, but because uh, it's once per battle, but it's quite interesting. Here we have this that subtract two from the bravery characteristic of enemy units while they are within six inch of the bear that it's quite similar to their ultimatum this is 12 inch anyway this is six if you combine them you can gain a minus four to give to the opponent so it's not bad it's up to you decide if it's worth so eventually choose then we have grave sand pump plate and at the end of the combat phase, roll a dice for each enemy unit within 3 inch of the bearer, and on FA plus that unit suffer a mortal wound. This uh, could be quite interesting because uh, it applies to every unit that are within 3 inch of the bearer, and uh, within 3 inch it means that uh, they are in combat. So it's a way to bring uh, more damage to the opponent. So it's not bad. It's not something completely reliable, but it's not bad. Then we have Moral Path that lets you once per battle in your hero phase pick one enemy unit within 6 inch of the bear that is visible to them, roll a dice and on a 3 plus that unit suffer D3 mortal wounds and you can heal one wound allocated to the bear for each mortal wounds that is inflicted and not negated. It's really quite an interesting one as uh, artifact because uh, in some way it's a lot similar to this one but this one it's apply only if you are in close combat uh, and uh, it's on a 4 plus so it's uh, not so sure this one it's on 3 plus so it's not certain and you risk to lose this uh, without doing anything but you risk to do damages much many more than this but at the same time you can heal yourself so it's a way to know that uh, you can uh, try. It, it's in your hero phase and you can try to heal by yourself. So it's not bad. It's within 6 inches, so not quite uh, long. But you can try to use this uh, as a way to inflict damage and heal yourself. So good, I say. Then we have Helm of Ordained that lets you add 1 to hit rolls for attacks made by friendly or more reapers units and their mounts. Uh, there, there are wholly within 12 inch of the beer. This is the most amazing one because it's applied also to the model itself because it's an Oscar Reaper model itself. If you think to apply to Hatred of the Lamy, it means that that model gains a plus 2 to hit. So it's really quite amazing. This thing, I think that... Uh, it's the best if you are going to bring your liege in close combat with other units and uh, it's uh, really amazing moreover because it's only within 12 inches so not so big but not so bad as range so really quite amazing one now we have the tools of bone shaper that are the artifacts available for the mortisan bone shapers and we have three of them the first is Artisan Key, that before you use the Beerus Bone Shaper abilities, roll a dice on a 4+, plus, you can either pick 2 units within 6 inch of the Beerus, of the affected by the Bone Shaper ability, instead of 1, or you can pick 1 unit within 6 inch of the Beerus and affect that by the Bone Shaper ability twice. 
it's not bad at all because it means that you can gain quite a lot because you have double way to make a healing so you can know that you assist a unit or a set of units with only one model because it has twice the option to heal or eventually you can use them in the way that before you heal and then you revive models with multiple wounds so not bad at all take note about this because if you are going to use artifact powers in this way this one one of the best that you can have access in the way to have a defensive way a supportive way so supporting this is really one of the best then we have this that it's load of saturation at the start of your hero phase pick one friendly Osirbo Reapers unit other than the bearer that is within one inch of them so really quite close and it's a bit of the problem of this until your next hero phase the deathless warrior's pato trait negates a wound or mortal wound allocated to that unit on a roll of a plus instead of six this is a way to have immortal ruler to other units so really quite interesting in such a way the problem is uh, that it doesn't affect uh, the model itself but uh, being able to apply to a unit can save it quite a lot then we have crafter gems that let you in your hero phase you can heal up to three wounds allocated to the bearer once of the total number of wounds this artifact has been used to heal during the battle equals to three it cannot be used again for the rest of battle so it's useful uh, but uh, not so useful it means that you are limited to heal maximum of three wounds you know that there are so you know for sure that you can save such ones but the problem is that finish these three wounds eventually if you suffer them you don't have any more this artifact accessible so this is quite a problem about this and then we can talk about the artifacts about the mortisan soul mason here we have three artifacts and the first one say that it's got its art cartouche and let you add one to wound rules for attacks made with melee weapons for friendly death units will within an inch of the bearer if the target does not have the death keyword so the problem is that if the target is a death unit but it refers that the bonus doesn't mean has to be the osirk reapers but death units so it's really quite amazing in such a way moreover you have to think that this one add but you have to be only within 9 inch but think for example using something like this the common trait for the lich that apply to itself or the helm of the ordained that it apply at the unit only within 12 inch of the bearer so if you are able to use both the artifacts of power it means that you can gain a plus one to hit and to wound really quite amazing one and so I think that it's one of the best to combine with other things. Then we have Su Reservoir that let you add Chu to casting roll for the bearers. However, if the casting roll for the bearer is a modified 10 plus, this artifact cannot be used again for the rest of the battle. And so it's not so good because it depends quite a lot by your dice thrown. But at the same time, it's uh, quite a low probability to gain a 10 plus so this is uh, quite understandable as option because uh, it lets you to be sure to be able to cast uh, and that way you are able to have at least one spell that it cast with uh, a great value so at least uh, it's not so bad in that way then we have run of uh, dance that let you add two to the billy wood characteristic uh, and add two to the attack characteristic of the ossified close of the bearer mount it means that the soul mason is more able to use it itself i mean that it's more able to combat it's not a perfect combat but at least it can defend itself and moreover resist better from the wounds that it can suffer so it's not so bad at all and eventually it can be combined with the mortison traits if it's the gen so 
you can save better for example with this uh, you can apply for example with the soul energy so you have quite a lot of different combinations that can be really quite interesting and so i do not make it seem quite bad and then we have the artifacts about the mortison soul reapers they are really quite interesting one these ones for example lumen shite let you subtract one from retros for others that target this beater and remember that it doesn't talk about combat or shooting so all the attacks and in addition add one to the casting roll for the beers when they attempt to cast soul blast pale of doom or any other spell from the lore of the mortisan so all the spells that they can cast really quite amazing so Take note because this one can be really quite an interesting one of artifact to use to save this model can, that can be the general or eventually also save and add the options that it can cast better so quite interesting. Then we have Via of Pandy that once per battle in your hero phase pick one enemy model within 12 inch of the bearer that is visible to them and roll a dice if the roll is equal or greater than the model's wounds characteristic that enemy model is lane it's uh, really quite interesting because it depends by the dice that you threw because it's only one use but at the same time it can be helping to kill a model that you need it's referring only not to the wounds that it has that model but the wound characteristics so you have to pay attention and remember that more wounds that model has more difficult is to be able to target and kill it but in the case that you don't know which artifact to take it could be useful anyway it's not the main one that i suggest you to take instead this it's guardian remesur and let you have a deathless warrior battle trait that it's at 5 plus instead of 6 so it's like having the immortal ruler again but to another model that it's the mortisan surreaper so for example if you want to make the mortisan surreaper your general you can access to another of these ones and at the same time having this applied so you as you have the ability to have like having two of this battle trait for example soul energy could be interesting in that way because you gain this and try to save it better so there are really quite a lot of options that you can have for example this one can be also interesting applied with this that let you have an extra spell to be able to cast so quite a lot of interesting things using these artifacts that are available moreover this artifact as another option is that you can shatter this artifact and prevent that wound that you were supposed to roll for before to roll eventually but you can't use again this artifact itself at the end so you have to decide paying attention quite attentively if it's worth to shatter it to save the wound or not so it's uh, really quite uh, interesting it's uh, a really saving one but uh, also something that you had to value quite a lot uh, how and when to apply the secondary effect uh, that it say and then we can start talking about the spell laws in this case uh, there has been a modifying about this because the nagash and arkan still know all the spells uh, but has been forgotten one model and so has been put a fuck that I'll make you see now to make no the change about it. In the original version it's only about the Mortisans and that's been added instead also the Vortmortian model with the keyword Vortmortian. This is because it's a mage but it will not have access to these spells because it's not a Mortisan itself so it's made in the way that it satisfies also this requirement. And now we can go to see the spells in the test. We have the first that it's Arcan Command that with a casting value of 6 plus you can receive the free rentless discipline points. So it's really quite useful and you can forget for example to apply some command trait and so on and to apply instead this one because it's better to try eventually 
to cast it, but remember that you also are consuming one option of the spells only to gain more of such. So you have to evaluate if it's better to try to cast these or other ones. The second of the spells is Empower Nadrit Weapons, that has a cast value of 5 plus and it's something that you have to have if you have Wizard Cause. It let you take a friendly Osak more Reapers unit that it's wholly within 24 inch with Nadrit Weapons ability and 24 inch even if wholly within it's quite big as range so not worry about it and that is visible to the caster itself and until the start of your next hero phase it means that it works in your turn and in the turn of your opponent so quite great as option that unit Nadrit Weapons ability cause two hits to be scored with a modified hit rolls of 5 plus instead of 6 for the normal units and on a 4 plus instead of 6 while the Cavalos Death Riders are changing and attacking with the Nadrit Spears. So it's really quite an amazing option cause it makes if you are able to combine with the Cavalos Death Riders quite an amount, a bigger amount of hits that you can have, so really quite uh, a big one. This spell is really quite amazing. Even if you are going to use the Cavalry of Riders with the other Nadrit weapons, uh, you have a 5 plus, but with the Spears, uh, you have a 4 plus, so you have to decide which option to take. But uh, remember that if you are going to include one of the wizards that can cast these really pay attention to the weapons that you are going to choose for your units because it's really quite important the third spell is protection of nagash this is quite an amazing spell it's a, it's a cast of value of 6 plus and it says that you gain a deathless warriors of 5 plus instead of 6 so it's like having another protection if you want for that model but if this save any mortal wound and so on and it still has not been slain after it solve those ones you can take it and locate it again so you can put them anywhere other on the battlefield more than an inch from any enemy units after setting up the model this spell is unbound so it's really quite uh, an amazing thing remember also that eventually you can also have it combined with soul energy to relocate it because uh, anyway it's uh, a wound that you could suffer and you can relocate it on the place but in this case you have to pay attention that uh, that place is still more than an inch from an enemy unit or otherwise change the place so you can go to conquer objectives you can go to support another unit on another side of the battlefield so you can gain quite a lot of options that are available and so this is a really great spell and it can save also your wizard so not bad at all eventually i suggest you not use this for your liege in the case that you choose to make it a wizard with the ability of the Dark Alcolit, because maybe it will not be the best. But anyway, it's really quite nice to save a model. The first spell is Reinforced Battle Shields, and it's quite similar to Protection of Nagash, but this is on the cast. This is on a unit as a cast value of 6 plus, and you can choose a unit of friendly Osir Reapers that it's wholly within 24 inch of the cast itself and visible to it and until your next hero phase roll a dice for each time that you get a wound and the on a 5 plus that wound is negative so it's again like a deathless warriors increased so a 5 plus 1 in this case anyway there has been the releasing of a fuck that clarify better what is the meaning of this spell and I'll put here now in a data about the design and commentary that specify that Cataclos Mortex of the Necropolis doesn't benefit from reinforced battle spells 
because the shields in this use refer to the weapon for the Mortec Guard and the Cavalos the Friders units. So it's specified in this case where you can apply such ones. The fifth of these spells is quite a nightmare for the opponents because it's drain vitality and has a casting value of 6 plus. If successfully cast, pick one enemy unit within 18 inch of the cast and visible to it and until your next hero phase, so all your and your opponent turn, reroll a modified hit rolls of 6 for attacks made by that unit, so it means negate some abilities that go with the 6 and reroll a modified several of 6 for attacks that target that unit. So really quite an amazing one to take note because uh, it's something that uh, really makes change how that unit can work. I think that uh, it's one of the best of the spell to take note about this lore, even if all they are quite amazing. And the sixth, it's uh, again quite interesting. It's Mortal Contract and as a casting value of 7+, plus, it's uh, the bigger to cast as value and you see that if you successfully cast pick a enemy unit within 18 inch of the caster and visible to it and for the rest of the battle roll a dice at the end of each phase during which any attacks made by that unit inflict any damage on a friendly or Cerebral reaper units on a free plus that enemy unit suffer d3 mortal wounds this has been changed and there is a fuck about, but it's really quite amazing. And now I'll make you see the facts related to it. The change from you cannot pick some unit to be affected in, by this spell more than once per hero battle to you can't pick the same unit to be the target of this spell more than once per battle. It decreases quite a lot the efficacy of this spell that it's still quite amazing but in a way you have to take note about such difference because it's really quite important and you can't give it again and again during the times so pay attention to start change because it's really quite important and then we can see the legends of the Osirx Reapers so we have each one with the different abilities and so on we have seen talked about them in the battle traits so now we go to analyze them quite better and understand better how they work the first of the legends is the mortis pretonius that it's the legion controlled directly by catacross this is quite an interesting one as legion but i don't know if it could be said to be the best because the ability is given within 12 inch a minus one to the bravery characteristic of the models, enemy models, if they are within 12 inch from the Mortis Praetorians units. So quite interesting and if you take a Voscore Battalion, because otherwise the first artifact is occupied by this. As a command ability, we have this that let you at the end of the enemy charge phase, so it works in the opponent turn, use this command ability. If you do so, pick one friendly Mortis Praetorians unit that either has the Hecatos keyword or is wholly within a 6 inch of a friendly Mortec Hecatos or is wholly within 12 inch of a friendly Mortis Praetorian hero. So quite easy to gain such ability, command ability working and until the end of the turn you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by that unit that target an enemy unit that made the charge move in the same turn. So really quite useful, but you have to be target of a charge from the enemy. So it's up to you decide if it's work good or not. Then we have as common trait this that once per battle at the start of the hero phase let you the general if it's on the battlefield receive a different additional relentless points in some way is the same as having this artifact so you have to understand if it was good for you 
it's not bad at all because uh, it's something that you can gain more relentless point but it's uh, once per battle so it's quite limiting in my opinion and then we had this artifact of power that let you pick one of the billion melee weapons and change the rent characteristic of that weapon to minus three that it's not bad at all remember it's not bad at all but you have to pay attention which one will be the one that you go to make this artifact work on and you must take this artifact at first so if you want another artifact you have to take a school battalion to play with with this legend so pay attention to such limitations then we have patrick's elite that it's maybe one of the best of the legends that you can choose this uh, it's really quite resilient as uh, a legend the ability is that you can add one to the save rules for attacks that target Patrick's elite units it means that it works both in combat and shooting so not to worry at all about this then as command ability we have that you can use the command ability in the combat phase and if you do so pick one friendly elite unit that either has the hecatos keyword or is wally within 6 inch of a friendly mortal hecatos or wally within 12 inch of a friendly petrix elite hero and in that combat phase improve the rent characteristic of melee weapon used by that unit by one you cannot pick the same unit from benefit from this command ability more than once per phase it's really quite obvious that it's so otherwise you could make a sort of screwing cause you could gain minus three minus six it's crazy such a thing and it's really quite interesting if you combine this with the subject of the spell that are the nadrit weapons so it becomes really quite interesting using combined because the Donadit weapon apply more attacks so you can really save quite a lot improving with this a really good combination and so pay attention to it as command trait you add two to the general wound characteristic that it's never a bad thing and as artifact to power the first wound allocated to the beer in each phase is negated so it's really quite interesting it's not mortal wound but wound i think that it's quite different uh, the option but anyway it means uh, reducing all uh, the damage that you can suffer so i think that it's not bad at all and uh, combined for example with uh, the genre together or simply applying to a model that goes to combat and so have to save better preventing that some wounds cause simply it's each phase so it means that in the opponent hero phase in the opponent hero shooting in the opponent hero combat and so on and your ones too i think that it's not bad at all so really one of the best and then we can see the staliac lords one of the legends sincerely it's one of my favorite one and you can find quite a lot of interesting things seen its ability for example that it's say that it's a kumorti and the stalial lords units can run and still charge later in the same turn so it's really quite amazing because it means that you can really have a great range moreover if you remember that if you go to the battle traits you have the command ability related that let you add three inch to your movement so it means that you can add the movement then you can run and still charge really quite amazing one then we can go to see the command ability that it's rally back that say that you can use this command ability in your movement phase and if you do so pick one friendly stalliark lords unit that has a mount and there is wholly within six inch of a friendly mortak hecatus or is wholly within 12 inch of a friendly stalliark lords hero and that unit can retreat in that phase and still charge later in the same turn as long as it did not run so it means that you can choose if you to apply extra movement run and charge or retreat and charge again and consider that you have the unstoppable charge ability with that 
usually mounted stalic lord units that has a mount so the defilots riders and the legis it means that you gain quite a lot of impact to the opponent really quite an easy one and here we had the common trait that it's quite a number edge one because it's twisted challenge instead that at the start of the combat phase you can pick one enemy hero within three inch of the jana until the end of that phase add one to hit rows for attacks made by this genre that target that enemy hero but subtract one from hit rows for attacks made by this genre that target any other unit so in the way that it's put the penalty apply only if you make a division of the attacks for the genre because if you go to pick such enemy hero then the attack on hit on him you have a bonus otherwise you have a malus on the other units eventually you can try to think about using as a secondary artifact this artifact itself that we have seen before that is this one and this let you have a adding a bonus to hit rows so you gain quite a lot in that way but also remember that to have this one as artifact you need to have another Vosco Battalion because the artifact is this one that you must pick as the main one so you have to have this artifact to a Stalag Lord Lige and here you can see that you can roll the three additional dice when this Lige uses the unstoppable charge ability so it's really quite good as artifact but you have to remember that uh, you have to take you must to take this so take note about such options anyway the style lords i think that uh, they are quite amazing and uh, i'm low for them and uh, i think that i'll try to buy some of the riders because uh, they're really quite good and you know if you have heard before my gift uh, how much i love them and then we have the ivory host this is related about gur and it's the realm of the beast and all the rules here represent that in fact as ability we have that at the start of the combat phase each friendly ivory host unit that is within six inch of a friendly ivory host model that has currently as any wound allocated to it become subject to rage until the end of that phase and you can add one to hit rows for attacks made by a unit that is subject to rage but subtract one from zeros from attack that target a unit that is subject to rage so this is really good and bad because you gain hit rows so quite a lot of bonus but you have a penalty because the save decrease but you are going to play quite a lot with the rentless discipline points here because you have the command ability that it's temper fury that say that you can use this command ability in the combat phase if you do so pick one friendly ivory host unit that is subject to rage this one and either as a hecatos keyword or include a more card hecatos or is only within 12 inch of a friendly ivory host hero in that phase do not subtract one from he save rules for attacks that target that unit because it's rage but still add one to hit rules for attack made by that unit so this one are to combine and uh, here you have to understand that you need a lot of relentless point discipline available because you need to make them work together but it's uh, not bad at all because you if you apply both of them you have bonuses but not maluses you have to play anyway pay attention to them together and then we had the common trait that it's uh, skin shaven savage Let's say that in each of your hero phase, roll a dice for the genre. On a 5 plus, add 1 to the characteristic of melee weapons by the genre for the rest of the battle. I want to make you understand one thing. This one is applied in each of your hero phases. So, technically, if it's all perfect, you can gain at the beginning of the fifth turn 
five more attacks for each weapon. So if your Janna has more than one weapon, it applies to each of them. So it's really quite crazy. It's based on luck. So remember that uh, it's on a 5 plus. But anyway, it means that uh, it can even multiply quite a lot your own attacks because uh, they gain each time once. So really wonderful. Then we had the artifact that say that you can pick one of the bigger melee weapons and add one to the attacks of characteristic of that weapon. It's nothing special, but if you understand the combination of these ones, you can understand that you can gain quite more attacks for at least of two of your heroes. So they are not bad, but you have to pay attention about using this combination. Anyway, it's not quite bad, this one. And then we have the legend Null Miria that it's magic reality and it's really quite amazing. And you can start to see it from the abilities. The Eldritch Nulls say that each time a friendly unit Null Myriad suffered a spell or an Ender spells, it's affected by it, then you can roll a dice so you can choose and it's quite important not to suffer your own friendly spells that are subject to such ability. And if you do so on a 5+, plus, you can ignore the effects of the spells or Ender Spells on that unit. It's like having an Ender Spells artifact from the realm of Fulgu that is in Malin Sources, so it's really quite an amazing one. If you are going to play often against magic opponents, this one can be really quite helpful. Moreover, you have the command ability that it's hold fast, that let you use this command ability before you use this ability itself, and this has to be that suffer the spell as for this and has to be within six inch of a model that has the Katos keyword or it's wholly within six inch of a friendly Mortec Hecaton or it's wholly within 12 inch of a friendly Null Myriad hero as usual that is not affected by the spell or end spells and that unit is not affected by the spell or end spells on a roll of 2 plus instead of 5 plus. Sincerely, it's really quite amazing. The problem is that you have to apply, if you want to apply this command ability, each time you suffer a spell on that unit, because it can be reproposed such command ability. So you gain, but you have quite a lot of uh, relentless uh, discipline points available to be able to combine these together. So pay attention because uh, if uh, a magic opponent has a lot of spells, uh, you can suffer quite a lot from this, but it's really quite amazing. And then we remember that it's on a 2 plus eventually. Not bad at all because uh, it changed quite a lot uh, the way that you can suffer. And here we have the command trait that are set and sinister that let you subtract one from hit rows for attacks made with melee weapons that target this general and in addition subtract one from the bravery characteristic of enemy units while there are within three inch of the general. So it's not bad. The main thing is to be able to prevent better the hit rows on combat phase. A pity that it's not also valid for the shooting, but uh, not bad at all. So take note of this command trait because uh, can be quite useful. And we had the artifact of power that say that you can pick one of the bitter melee weapons. Do not make save rolls for attacks made with that weapon. And wounds inflicted by that weapon cannot be negated when they are allocated to a model. The wounds can be aired later in the battle. So it means that it's better than having any rend. So these make wounds. It's crazy. It's one of the best artifacts that you can ever see. So doesn't mind if you are safe. Doesn't mind if you are able to prevent any damage. Because you can make them always pass through. So this is one of the best completely really quite crazy and quite amazing. And then we have one of the more characteristic legends, it's Kematorians. This one is amazing as background, but the abilities 
can be really quite useful or quite uh, unuseful. The ability is the immolation, that see that you can roll a dice each time a friendly crematorious model is slain by an attack made with melee weapons, only melee ones, before the slain model is removed from play, add one to the roll if the slain model is a hero or a monster, so in the case that you can improve, and on a 5 plus you can pick a enemy unit within 3 inch of the slain model, that unit suffer one mortal wounds. So this is quite awesome if you think about going with big units against an opponent, make them die after they have done their attacks and so on, so you can make them having such through and eventually later summoning back the models and continue, so you can really make a sort of deteriorating of the opponent. Instead here we can find this command ability that say that in the combat phase we can pick one friendly crematorium unit that ever has the Hecatos keyword or is wholly within 6 inch of a friendly Mortak Hecatos or is wholly within 12 inch of a friendly crematorium hero and do not apply the cover modified to save rules for attacks made with melee weapons that crematorium's units in that phase. So it means that this common ability is useful only if the opponent is in cover and it's not necessary something that you'll be able to find because if the opponent is in cover it is quite useful but if it's not in cover it's completely useless, really strange one. And if you go to see the common traits here, we can find that if this channel is slain, you can add two to the emulation dice roll here instead of one. So this is counting. So on a three plus, and if the roll is successful, inflict d3 mortal wounds instead of one. So to apply this, your channel has to die. And okay, at least does something, I try to do something, but uh, I think that it's not really quite useful at the end. And here we have the artifact of power that say that you can pick uh, one of the bitter melee weapons and add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon. So okay, but not uh, quite good, since the, ar the artifacts are better. Anyway, I think that the main ability is this one, that it's really good. The other ones uh, you have in some way find a way to compensate. I think that the ones that will try to play this Legion will try to make this ability really quite worth, so really improving such one, or eventually because they are really in law for their background of such a Legion, because it's really quite amazing. A bit of pity because it could have been a bit better, this one. And now we have the terrain feature of the Ossex Reapers. In this case, uh, there are quite a lot of things uh, to talk about. The first thing is that if you are interested about the unboxing of such one, in the playlist you can find the link or eventually also the playlist with all the things related about the Ossex Reaper. So you can see the unboxing of this there. And one other thing, and it's that this, as rules, you have to deploy it before the other terrain feature. So you have to build this when you build the battlefield. And it's quite a problem when you think about tournaments. And about the tournaments, the Games Workshop has released a narrata that talk about this that you can see now. And the next about the facts for the design commentary, it's about the Bontite Nexus, cause there is a problem, it's a terrain feature that should be put on the field before the other terrain features. So the problem is when you go to a tournament and the fields, the battlefields are yet prepared. So they suggest you to ask eventually to the organizer to understand how to behave using such Bontite Nexus and it's something that I suggest you because you have a problem about uh, you have the ability to bring with you it and eventually also you can change the army rooster that you are going to use if you are going to use such one or not so 
ask to the organizer as it said because it's quite important as well even if i would have preferred something more like uh, the organizer as to find a way to let you do because you are going to use such model it's a bit uh, crazy this way but uh, okay take note but what does the shining futures does it has four different options that are all quite amazing ones in your hero phase you can choose one of these ones the first it lets you pick one unit woolly within 18 inch of this terrain and that is visible to it but it's quite impossible not to be visible because it's really quite big and on a 4 plus you subtract one to hit rows for attacks made by the, that unit until your next the hero phase so it's really quite amazing if you think that uh, it's a terrain feature that you can position on all the field uh, and so you can also target all the shooting of uh, the shooting units of your opponent or uh, the melee units uh, that are close to your ones so it's really quite big if you are able to put this uh, quite in the center of the battlefield it's really quite an amazing one the second one is Punishment of Death that lets you pick one unit, enemy unit within 36 inch. There is quite a big range in this case. And on a 2 plus, that unit suffers one mortal wound. It's not much, okay, but it's like casting a spell and be sure to make some damage because 2 plus it's quite easy to realize. Then we have Punishment of Ignorance that lets you pick one enemy wizard within 36 inch of this time and future and visible to it and on a 2 plus subtract one from casting dispelling and unbinding rules for that unit until your next zero phase so this is really quite amazing because with this free remember that it's free time and future you are able to make something that it's worth uh, some artifacts uh, and even better so really quite amazing one about this okay only one but the range is quite big because it's 36 inch and anyway it's uh, something that has uh, quite a lot of options so really a nice one and then we have the punishment of lethargy that let you pick one enemy unit wholly within 18 inch so a lot less of the range and roll a dice and on a 4 plus that unit cannot run until your next hero phase and it use a d6 instead of 2d6 to make charge rolls it means cut quite a lot the options of that unit cause it forbid it to run but moreover you decrease the range of the charge so i think that it's really quite amazing one Sincerely, it's one of the best terrain features that I have ever seen and uh, really quite uh, interesting one. So the model is beautiful, so I suggest you to buy and see the link eventually to see how it is. But moreover, I think that it's really a lot useful for your army if you are able to utilize. Here we have a battle plan on how to utilize this Nexus, so we can find this Shank Future that is the main one about this case. And we can continue seeing what are next. And here we can find Path to Glory, so we can find the rules to play Path to Glory. And uh, so we can find the warbands that we can create and so on. Usually I don't play such game, but uh, they are really quite interesting and quite rich. And here we can see instead the War Scroll Battalions that are inside these uh, Osirbo Reapers and they are really quite interesting. Moreover, because they are not related mainly to the charters as for the Legends of Nagash. So luckily they followed uh, in this case uh, something that is related about the entire town. So you can choose uh, which one go to play. So the charters uh, or uh, the normal heroes and so on without having to be forced to go to build for those models so quite more free and quite more interesting in such a way this one it's the Oscar court and it's like it says so you need to apply for be able to play this one also the other Oscar battalions so it's really quite great, but uh, forget about using it if you're go not going to use something like an apocalypse size. So really a big one. 
but the bonus is that at the start of your hero phase, if your Jenna is from this battalion and on the battlefield, you receive the three relentless discipline points. So it's a way to have more of these relentless points that they are quite useful for you. So it's really quite awesome in that case. And here we can start talking about the normal War School Battalions. There are some that are really quite awesome and others that are not so good. So we can start to see them step by step. The first one is Mortic Shield Corps that let you once per turn use the Shield Wall Command ability for units that are from this battalion without spending relentless points to do so. So it's only once. So you have three mortar guards uh, units that can uh, use such one and only one of them can use this but uh, if you see how much you are going to use and that you are going to use this because these are units and this is uh, anyway a hero that you are going to play anyway if you are able to pay for such ones uh, it's not bad at all because uh, they give you a relentless discipline points adding for you to play with uh, and more uh, you have also to remember that you have access to another artifact if you are going to play these four scroll battalions. So they are really quite interesting in such a way. So I suggest you to take note about this one because it's really quite worth. Then we have this one that it's Mortis and Trident that uh, it's mainly related about uh, the heroes and uh, the Gossetus Harvester. This is uh, quite a problematic one because it's quite amazing. In fact, uh, this one let you make that each Mortisan from this battalion can attempt to cast one extra spell in your hero phase if it is within 18 inch of a Ghostizar Harvester, so this one, from the same battalion and the Ghost Harvester is within 3 inch of an enemy unit. But to be within 3 inch it means that the Ghostizar Harvester is in close combat. So you have to take note about this detail because it's still really quite important. It's good to be able to cast other spells, but you have to have this model in close combat to be able to do. So it's a double edge. I mean that you risk to lose this one to make them cast or anyway, because this one is anyway good in close combat. You have to be sure that it is in close combat in your turn in the hero phase so that you are able to use this to improve your magic so it's good but you have to pay attention how fast you can send the ghost harvester to the enemy so pay attention to it and then we have the cataclysm death cleave that it's composed by two necropolis stalkers units and one morgas and bringer units and the ability is really quite interesting. It's applied only once, but it's important one. And it's that after the armies are set up, but before the first battle round begins, if all the units, so all of these from this battalion are fully within 12 inch of these battalions, Morgas Arbingas units, remember that has to be Arbingas units, you can move any unit from this battalion up to 6 inch. So it's really quite important this one because you can use this extra movement to approach faster to some objectives or to the opponent units. Remember for example the Arbingas can move with this of 6 inch, then you can use the relentless discipline points to use the basic command ability from this Osirbo Reapers battle to move a 3 extra inch in your movement phase and you can have a charge of 3d6 inch so it means uh, that at the end with this and one command point uh, one relentless discipline point okay you can move up to 9 inch more so it's uh, really quite amazing and you are able to really keep close to the opponent so you can uh, target quite easily some units of your opponent that has to be paying quite a lot of attention to such combination so, it's really something that I suggest you to think about using because uh, even if uh, it seems not so good, uh, it's really quite amazing as options that uh, it gives you to play with. And here we have the Aegis Immortal one that uh, used the Morgas Arcane instead of the Ambigas and the Immortal Guards instead of the Necropolis Turkus. This is uh, 
interesting because uh, it, it's a sort of pantomimic of the ones that we found in the Legend of Nagash with the Morgas ones and Nagash. Instead, this one make gain the Morgas Archai unit the way to have the ability Surbound Protectors of the Mortal Guard. The problem is that uh, it do you need, because uh, this old War Scroll Battalion is to make the Morgas Archai gain uh, such ability. And uh, the other option is that uh, when you're going to save because this Surbound Protectors, uh, you gain a 5 plus uh, ability to negate wounds or mortal wounds uh, that you allocated thanks uh, to the Surbound Protection. So it's uh, good, but this protection is applied only when it's applied the surbound protector ability. So it means that you have to suffer wounds to the hero that you're going to protect instead of being able to save directly. So if they are going to target directly your units, you are not having such bonus to your saving. So you have to see if it's worth paying such price to be able to gain such more protection for such units, so pay attention if uh, it's worth. And now we have something quite interesting, that it's Cavalus Lance. In some way, this uh, is a way to play the legend of the Cavalus, this one, so the Stalag Lords one, in the way that you gain the command ability for such unit directly, because the ability is if you're going to use the Liege and two Cavalus Riders, the Riders, you gain that units from this battalion can charge even if they retreat earlier in the same turn and if they are wholly within 12 inch of the Liege from the same battalion when the charge roll is made. So it means that you can gain without using command point or better the relentless discipline points in the way that you gain for this with the option that you are wholly within 12 inches from this liege. So it's really quite amazing this one. Moreover, once per turn you can use the, the Death Rider Wedge command ability for a unit from this battalion without spending relentless discipline points to do so. It's really quite crazy because it means that you can forget about using the Staliac Lord's Legion but you gain the abilities of it and you gain also a free one ability for using this. So if you're going to play these models, I suggest you to play this because you gain quite a lot and also an artifact to play with. So if you're going to be interested about playing another legend and you're going to be interested to play these models, I suggest to evaluate quite a lot this one because it's really quite an amazing one to take note. And this instead is something that uh, it's uh, a shooting crazy one because uh, it allows you to make that the Mortec Crowels are really protected when uh, you shoot. So it's really quite interesting because with these uh, options uh, you are able to make in the way that when these Crowels suffer wounds uh, and this Crowel, one of these two, is within a free inch of a mortal guard unit, so try to make this mortal guard quite big eventually. Then on a 4 plus, you can make the mortal wound or the wound allocated to the mortal guard instead of the mortal crawlers. And if you have also the mortis and bushipper fringe close to such one, to such crawlers, it means that you are able to have an added two to such dice roll so it means that on a 2 plus you can make move the wounds and mortal wounds to the mortal guard unit so it's really quite amazing one to protect them obviously the one that you have to understand is that you gain something that it costs you a bit because the mortis and bush shaper it's a wizard so you have to be able to gain in the way that you are able to anyway cast, but you can position it accurately. And uh, moreover, you have the mortal guard that has to be a sort of uh, way to have a line to protect such groves. But if you're interested to, to play such ones, uh, I think that uh, it's really quite an amazing one to take note as a score battalion because it's really quite interesting one. 
and then we can start to see the units of this Osex Bone Reapers. And we can start to see from the Catacross and Nagash. These ones are really quite interesting. Catacross is really quite full of abilities, it's really quite an amazing one. And the profile itself that has changed, so I'll put now here the fact that make you know how it changed this one, or better, perfected it. It's about Caracruz and its damage table, because there are some problems with the damage table itself. So, the wound suffered has changed from 0 to 1, 2 to 3 instead of 1 to 3 in the original, 4 to 7 instead of 4 to 8, because the next step is 8 to 12. So, there's been problems with the writing and it has been adapted. It was quite... Uh, sure that uh, there was some change about but now they clarify where there are the changes themselves and the catacus model it's really quite amazing as model as as profile you need some time to understand all this one and uh, talking instead about nagash we can find that quite a lot of things has been updated so i think that they will be the releasing in the real uh, quite close future about an updating also for legend of nagash one uh, about this uh, model cause and other ones uh, cause for example narkan cause uh, there has been some modifying for example uh, the part about the invocation of nagash that is referring also to osak boripas so it will have uh, to have such a change also in that case and here we can find arkan the black that has changed also here, as I said, a bit about the Mortax of Sacrament part that has the Osseg Reapers, and there has been a clarify about the fact about its spell of Curse of the Years. So I give now you this fact so that you can realize how it works. And it's related about Ark and the Curse of Years, and it specified that if a mortal wound inflicted by the Curse of the Years spells is negated, you can roll another dice as described within the rules text and it's say no because it has been prevented as mortal wound so it doesn't have any more effect and we can continue with furia uh, um, sorry <laughs> my gift and we continue with xanthos that has been really quite amazing because if you are going to consider the abilities of such charters and the abilities of the normal league that it's here, in the background here. There are really quite uh, amazing difference for quite a few amount of points of different. So I think that uh, if you can choose, uh, try to take this one before because it's uh, a bit better. But in a way, it's also great this model because um, I like it uh, and can have uh, the Vosco Battalions, uh, the Legions, uh, of the Stalia Lords that are quite amazing ones and can evaluate quite a lot these models. So eventually think about taking both of them, so this one and a secondary one lead with this one, because they are really quite amazing ones, these models, really awesome. And then we can start to see the images that are quite a lot and quite awesome ones. This is the first and it's one that it's quite related about being able to take in shape your options for the Osharks Bull Reapers, so take note. And it has a spell that in some way it's a sort of degraded version of the Arcan spell Curse of the Years, but has quite an interesting range eventually to use it. Instead, here we have one of the models that I like more in the Osharks Bull Reapers as model itself. It's much similar to a Wraith, so remember about this because these abilities are mainly related about a Wraith. But the magic is in close combat, so it's a really more smaller version of this one and works only in close combat. But uh, I think that it's really quite interesting as spell and the mod itself is really, really nice. Here we can see another of the wizards and this is uh, quite a bombing wizard because it has two spells available and one that is this one that make in the way that you can reroll the hit rolls of ones for attacks made by the unit that has been target of the osak reapers but 
what is amazing is this ability that lets you at the end of the hero phase roll a dice and you can even try to cast this spell multiple times so it's really quite amazing to be sure that you are able to make this spell going through so pay attention because this is something that you'll risk to include in your armies because it's something that gives quite a lot of boost to your combat and the way that you force the hand of the opponent to dispel or to avoid to dispel in the way that it has enough dispelling for other things that you're going to cast so really quite have some one this model and then we have a special chariot this mokmortian that has quite a lot of similar cause it's a bone reapers so it's really quite good in close combat even if it has something that it's also a shooting way and uh, it's really quite effective uh, in close combat both because uh, it can prevent to be hit by the opponent's unit or more uh, if you go to see this because it gives uh, malus uh, to the bravery and the uh, wizards unbinding and so on to his cast a uh, range uh, it's quite small because it's 12 inch but it's really quite amazing and then we had this spell because this can cast two spells and bind two but uh, it's really quite amazing because it can kill models so it's quite crazy because it has a one inch of range but on fa plus you can kill any model about this anyway there is a fuck that i'll make you see now it's about mortal touch and it asks if i can use the umbras per portal to measure the range and visibility of the mortal touch spell if it's successful cast and is say yes so it means that you can amplify quite a lot the range of this spell and it's really quite crazy as thing because otherwise it will have only one inch range so pay attention to such option because it's really quite important and then we have one base unit that it's the mortar guard that it's really quite amazing it's something that you can define as a specialistic skeleton and it's quite interesting because it has these ability that are the nadrit weapons that with a six on the hit they can make two hits instead of one so this is really quite interesting and remember that you have quite a lot of spells and abilities and artifacts that are available to make this even more useful so also the Volsco Battalions can be in such a way for these ones, so pay attention to it. And this uh, is a really great uh, command ability that it makes reroll the save rolls for attacks uh, that target uh, that unit until uh, the end of the combat phase. So it's only for the combat phase, but uh, it's really quite interesting. Remember that you have Volsco Battalion that make one of these units uh, free to use this one uh, for free so it's uh, really a great one as uh, a command ability this unit uh, is the base one i'd change the heads of these models because i don't like them too much but they are really quite good as unit so try to use it eventually for your roosters and now we have one of my favorite units that are the cavalos the friders these are the riders they are really quite interesting remember that this amount of wounds it means that they can resurrect it so they are really quite interesting also in that way we have as we talked before the nadrit weapons and we have this death ride wedge in this case this has received as a command abilities a change moreover because otherwise it will be really too heavy as uh, command abilities so now i'll make you see the fact uh, that it's related about it's really quite important because uh, it's about uh, the command abilities that this unit has and uh, it make it be applied this command ability no more than once uh, per turn it means that uh, you can uh, multiply the times uh, that uh, you can gain okay a lot of people that I heard uh, they were referring the main thing about uh, being able to move an extra three inch to pile in. But what I was more concerned about uh, it was the ability to damage on a five plus uh, and make mortal wounds. 
So it's really quite uh, an important thing that uh, it changed because uh, it decreased uh, the power of such unit using such command ability. So pay attention because uh, it's quite a game changing this one for the ones that are going to play the Calavarus uh, Death Riders. And then we have one of the leads of this army that are the Immortis Guard. These uh, are quite amazing because uh, you have to remember that you have the soul bond protector that we talked before with Devil's Crew Battalion and also this has uh, this command ability that make you this unit uh, attack twice so really quite crazy and uh, quite heavy in the way that they can fight they don't have too many of the attacks but anyway being able to attack twice uh, they can be really quite amazing ones and remember that you can gain quite a lot of bonus from the heroes and so on so really a great unit to talk about and then we can talk about the necropolis stalkers in this case we have quite an amusing one because we can choose these options to know in some way are similar to the morgast archive and our bringers because they can gain quite a lot of different effects uh, with these weapons but what is interesting are the different modes uh, to pl play or better to fight so you each time you can choose which one uh, to apply and it's really quite amazing and the command ability it's even better because we had the option to reroll the run and charge rolls for that unit uh, until the end of your next hero phase and make it uh, move as flying but doesn't catch fire it's only count as flying when you are going across the turning features so pay attention to such defense because it's really quite important but also the option to reroll the charge or the run it's really quite awesome as option that you can use and then we had the classic Morgas Archai and Arbingas, so uh, they are as usual, remember eventually the Devil's Scroll Battalion to use them, but what changed is that they have the keyword Hecatos, it means that they can be assigned by themselves and they are able to save with the Undead Warrior option, so they have an extra save that usually in the Legend of Nagash they will not have, so they are really quite good in such a way and quite amazing ones. Then we have the Mortal Crawler that is the catapult of the Oscar Reapers that is quite similar as I said to the school catapult of the Camry and this is quite a threat catapult literally and you can choose three different ways to shoot the main one that is the usual one that you can find that more is saved more it gains hits then we have the other one that uh, more is saved more it's worth but uh, it works uh, when uh, the bravery of the opponent uh, is not so high and uh, the other one that becomes greater as damage more this suffered remember that these options can't be multiplied and about this option this catapult we have two facts that i'll make you see how they works now the first is about if you can use the endless duty command ability that are of the arch cavalos zandos and the liege cavalos if they can add attacks to the special way to fire of the mortal cruise that it's golden of torment or cursed steel instead they say that no you can't and they are referring of only one for each of such uses per battle so it's specified and you can't use them in another way or amplify the way to make them attack so if you want to make more attacks take more mortal crawlers about the use of the dread catapult cauldrons of torment option and the amount of wounds that it does and it's say that one model from the target unit is slain for each individual dice roll that it is equal or greater than a modified bravery characteristic of the target unit so it's quite important because it specifies better than it's one model slain for each type 
remember that uh, it's the unmodified bravery that uh, you have to take note about uh, the opponent so take note because it's really quite important but if the bravery of the opponent is quite low you can really make in the way that you can make a massacre of a unit or otherwise even try to go to pick a general or son of the opponent and try to kill it it's not so simple because uh, you have to find someone that has low bravery from the start but it's really quite amazing as uh, option specified for this mod so pay attention and now a mod that i really love that and it's uh, the gotizar harvester this uh, has quite a lot of different options and uh, you only need to read it because it has really quite a lot of attacks uh, shooting and uh, fighting and uh, it has the option to heal the nearby models also then uh, make that uh, it can even improve uh, the way that it hits the opponents but what is interesting about this it has been the change of this so pay attention because it has been decreased its uh, strength because now there is a fact that specified this part of it and i'll make you see this fact now about the costizars harvesters and in particular bone harvest that see a change because it change from roll a dice each time a mod is slain within three inch of this model to roll a dice each time a mod is slain within three inch of any model with this ability this is in the way that you can't use twice the ability if you have ghosted harvesters for the same model so it counts only once so it's a way to clean this part in the way that it not abused so pay attention to such change and now we have then the spells that i want to remember you i made the unboxing about so if you are interested about the unbox of such models you can find in the description the playlist or the link about the specific video about so you can see how they are and how you can build them so i think that uh, it's quite interesting so i send you to see also that video eventually you can search in the description itself so now we can analyze this space one thing to remember about this and the space it's that uh, they are so linked so it means uh, that they are associated to the cast if the cast dies then the space is finished so it ends and another thing is that they subtract one to the casting rules for the caster that it's so linked so remember that uh, you are really linked to that spell and you can't have a caster having more of such uh, so linked and the spells but they are really quite amazing anyway then we can talk about the spells themselves this uh, it's quite interesting because uh, it targets one enemy hero and it moves uh, doesn't need to move uh, towards the heroes necessary but it's better because uh, there is a range around this model that it's three inch where the units that are within three inch of it on a two plus they suffer d3 mortal wounds and if that target of such spell is within this three inch on a two plus it suffer d6 mortal wounds instead of d3 so it's really quite interesting moreover if you think that osiax bone reapers are not affected by this ability so in a mirror match it uh, it's problematic but otherwise uh, it's really quite interesting Moreover, if you kill this hero, this spell disappears by itself. So in this case, it's really quite interesting also taking note about such options for this spell. This second spell, it's really quite interesting because it makes quite unstable but quite interesting options. In fact, it doesn't affect death units. So remember that it works on all the others but not death faction. And... You can roll all, for all the units that are from Chaos, Destruction and Order models and if any of them, of these models, are slain within 6 of this model, for any of such models, not unit models, you can roll a die and on a 1 and 2 you heal 1 wood allocated to the caster. On a 3-4 you inflict 1 mortal wound on each of the 
chaos discussion or order unit within six inch of this model so it makes seem like this is really a propagating of crazy things because as it's written for each model that you kill you can make so that you can make a damage to all the other so you can create a really quite amazing one and on f5 or 6 you do both so heal and damage but what it's more interesting it's second sight that make that anything visible from this model is also visible to the cast that it's so linked to this model so it means that you can gain quite a lot more advantage about the sites and how you can target the other units so it's really quite interesting spell in my opinion to use even in strategic way and the first spell it's even better cause it make you subtract one from the bravery of units that are within 12 inch of this mod and Osec Bone Reapers units are not affected but you can add one to hit to roll for attacks made by Osex Bone Reapers units that target a unit that is within 12 inch of this model and its attacks so both shooting and melee so it's really quite interesting moreover cause the other units the enemy units are to be within 12 inch not only within so really quite a big range available so something that uh, is really quite uh, interesting to improve also better what are the options uh, to kill for the Oscars Bone Reapers really quite an amazing spell uh, to take note here we have the profiles the pitch battle profiles so with the points they are really quite interesting and you can understand that it's a bit elite as army but they are really quite amazing as chooses so you have to pay attention and it works perfectly from the range of 2000 points or more but you really have a lot of options that you can choose through so pay attention and eventually think about combining them as you can see the and the spells are not too much costly and also the Vosco battalions are not bad as uh, costly ones so quite interesting what you have to pay attention more it's uh, the heroes that can be really quite heavy as amount of points that can set out to the army itself but uh, they are still excellent then here we can see the pack cover that we've seen before that it's really quite amazing and then we have uh, this uh, that is the back of uh, the book, the battle to myself. So what to say about this battle tom? I think that it's really amazing. I fall in love for this one and I'm a bit uh, really itchy to make uh, this army. So I'd like to buy a lot of these models but they cost quite a lot also. Not so much but anyway they are not cheap. I'm really to see a box collector to collect this army because they are really quite amazing. Some models you can change, you can modify. I suggest you anyway to take note that you should monetize these models because you can gain quite a lot. Moreover, the riders and the elites units because they are quite expensive otherwise to have all the different options in all the ways playable. But anyway, it's really quite amazing. The heroes are beautiful, some of the best of the new models that has been released. I'm really liking it. It's not what I wanted to see. I mean that I would have preferred to see an army about skeleton sword. But they are really quite close. They are really quite close also to the concept of Camry, but they are far from it. So the concept of this army is quite uh, really strong the mortar of this army has a really great background that it make you love it or not love but anyway respect it because it's really quite good developed as a charter so really quite amazing so i suggest to buy even only to have this battle tone because it had a lot of background if you're interested about it or at least you can know better this army if you are going to meet it on the battlefield so really something that uh, I'm seeing to it and uh, I suggest you to give a try at least uh, to read
because uh, it's amazing. Okay, I'm in love for this army. Okay, I'm uh, on side. <laughs> oh, sorry. Anyway, from Dynamod, it's everything. I invite you to put a like on this video, to subscribe to the channel, to ring the bell, and to comment this video if you are interested in something about this video or you want to suggest me some arguments for other videos. I hope to see you again to the next time.